Welcome to Repair University. You know, one of the things that I'm finding is most commonly left out of the repair process is automotive foams. Shops have confusion on when to use them, how to replace them, what products to choose. And so we've invited 3M, Sean Collins, to come talk to us about automotive foams. Now, Sean, the use is just ramping up. Uh, what are some tips, tricks, and things we need to know about foams? Well, first of all, we need to know that it needs to go back in the vehicle. It's in there for a reason. The, the vehicle manufacturer put it in there for a certain purpose, whether it's to absorb noise, block wind, or, or gases from traveling through the vehicle. So it's very important that it goes back in. Secondly, we need to know that there's usually a way to get it in. There may be some very rare circumstances where you close something out with a panel, it may be difficult to get in, but in most cases you can find a way to get foam in. But there are certain tips and tricks you're going to need to know to be able to do that. Now, what, there's a kind of a selection of different foams from, from the different manufacturers as I look at cars, I'm seeing, always seeing different types. What are the types of automotive foams that a repair technician is going to run into? Right, you're going to see a flexible foam, and that again is in there to absorb noise and quiet the vehicle down. You're going to see a rigid foam, which is usually meant to support a panel, um, but keep a panel from flexing so that doesn't work hard and eventually crack. And then another foam you're going to see is an NVH foam, which is kind of a misnomer. It's really not a foam. It doesn't foam up, but it's more like a urethane. But that can come in really handy because we can use that to actually attach existing foam. So there are, are a lot of cases where the foam may not have to be even taken out, removed, and replaced where we can apply some of that NVH material and then just reapply the panel over the top of the existing foam. Are there any tips or tricks for the repairs on preparing to do the foam, preparing the gun, selecting material, or anything there? Well, yeah, it's really important that we understand the product. So reading the instructions is very important. You know, we, we know we don't always do that, but it's very important with the foams because they have very unique and different properties depending on the foam. So there may be a foam that foams up and starts begins to expand in 40 seconds. There may be a foam that won't expand for five minutes, which will allow us to get it down into a remote cavity. So we need to understand how that foam works and what those properties are so that it, it works as a tool for us to, to use it properly. Now one of the things that we talk about a lot when we, we get calls, maybe a product failure or something on the tech line, it always comes back to preparation and prepping the cartridge and getting that done. What are some tips for cartridge use? Well, the biggest thing is that we equalize the cartridge. And I know every iCar class you go to, anything, any training, they always talk about equalizing the cartridge. And I think guys kind of take that for granted. It's very, very important. We need to make sure that both A and B side of the product are, are coming out. And we need to make sure that there's no air in that cartridge. If you get an air pocket in that cartridge, only one side will be coming out and it'll just go down as a liquid into that pillar and it never will react and foam up. So no. we have to make sure that that's equalized. We can't take that for granted. And that'll be a big mess. Now, one of the things I notice when I go out to a shop is they'll load the cartridge and immediately do this. Right. And there's a problem with that. What's the problem with equalizing the cartridge in a down motion? Right. We want to equalize it upwards. I always talk about like a doctor's office where they take a syringe and they get the air out of the, the medicine by uh, ejecting some out. So we, that's how we want to do it. Same thing where we get the air bubbles to the top and any air will come out. Uh, if we have an air pocket in there, again, it could be very bad and the product may never harden up. Well, now that we've got our cartridge loaded and we know what foam we're going to use for the repair we've got set up back here, let's get out to the shop, get in our prop part on the B pillar and start talking about how you're going to install foams in the repair process. Now, one of the things we've done here is we've set up a typical repair that you're going to see in the shop that's going to have automotive foams most likely to be needed to complete the repair properly with a B pillar. Now, other places you're going to see foams are going to be in the doors, in the quarter panels, cells, etc. Now, Sean, let's talk about what it takes to prep the panel for the foam application that we've prepared earlier. Right. The first thing we need to be sure of is that we have all the original coatings intact. Now, if we remove the, the, the primer or the e-coat when we remove the existing foam, 
using a Scotch-Brite belt or sandpaper or chisel, whatever it is, if we remove the coatings, we have to reapply those coatings. There are no corrosion protection properties in the foam, so we need to use a 2K primer, uh, urethane or epoxy primer back in that part. All right, super critical that we get those corrosion protection materials back in. Now, one of the things that we talk about a lot with technicians is that it's not just a matter of finding an access port to put the, to put the foam in, but it's a matter of containing the foam to where the manufacturer wants it to go back, just like it was when it came from the factory. Exactly. What are some steps to containing foam in the application process? Well, we have to find a way to block the foam from just flowing out through the bottom of the panel. So typically, we're going to create some type of a dam. And we'll go through and show a couple different uh, techniques to do that. So we have to uh, create a dam to keep it from flowing out. And we also want to be sure that we're putting about the same amount of foam in. So, uh, you know, if the manufacturer just had a small uh, band of foam through the middle, we don't want to fill the entire pillar. Right. So, you know, we're not always going to empty a cartridge down into that cavity. So we want to, uh, as best we can, determine the amount of foam that we want to fill that particular area. And keep in mind that at about 70 degrees, the foam will expand 10 times its liquid volume. So that's a good guideline right there. All right, so knowing the temperature of your shop, the humidity, and some of the things that came in those instructions is gonna be super critical to getting the install proper. Right, it's gonna be very different if it's 50 degrees in your shop than it is if it's 90 degrees in your shop. You're gonna have a lot difference in volume of foam depending on temperature. All right, well, let's get to making some of those dams and then get into the install process. And I'm gonna get out of your way and we're gonna show how this repair would work. Sounds good. So what I need to do now is dispense some pillar foam into this cavity. So I'm gonna take a previously prepared cartridge that I've already equalized and I'm gonna dispense the pillar foam slowly into this cavity. Now this, this has a slow foam time, so it's gonna take several minutes before the chemicals start to react and foam up to fill this cavity. You've got some time with this foam, so it's okay to take a little time to make sure that you get it placed in the proper location. As you can see, it's gonna take a few minutes before the chemicals react and it foams up. Now it's okay if you get some minor leaking down through the bottom of the dam, that's not gonna be a factor, but it's gonna retain the majority of the foam and keep it in place. Keep in mind that this is heavily dependent on temperature as well. So the warmer your shop is, the quicker and the more volume of foam you'll actually get. If your shop is cooler, it may take longer and you may actually get a little smaller area of foam. Okay, another nice little tip for getting the foam where we want it is to use a, a water balloon and inflate it with air inside that cavity so it blocks the foam from going all the way down into that pillar. So I'm gonna demonstrate that here again on this B pillar. So what I'm gonna do is take a regular water balloon, insert it through the hole in the area where I want the foam to be retained. Then I'll take my blow gun and carefully and slowly fill that balloon. Now that we've got our dam in place, I'm going to dispense some of the flexible foam through a hole above to place it exactly where we need it to be. So I've got a pre-prepared cartridge of flexible foam, all equalized. Now I can install it down through the hole. It'll take just a couple minutes to begin to foam. And again, it'll depend on the temperature in your shop, how much volume, and how quickly that will begin to foam. So as you can see, our dam acted as it should and kept the foam exactly where we wanted it to be. Sean, you made that look really simple throughout the repair process there. What are some closing tips, tricks, or information that the repairer needs to know? Well, again, knowing where the foam needs to go and getting the correct type of foam 
And you know, sometimes it just takes a little creativity, a little uh, artsy crafty kind of things to, to be able to get these where you want them. And again, sometimes you're just gonna have to uh, improvise a little bit but there's usually a way to get that foam where it belongs. When you're repairing a car these days, it's important that we put it back exactly like the factory had it when it leaves our shop, and that means replacing the foams. It's not just an acoustical treatment for the vehicle, but some foams have a safety value, and in fact, they are crash tested with the foam in place. If you want any more information on the products that you saw used in today's show, or any of the other information that 3M has to offer, please visit 3mcollision.com. Thanks, and we'll see you on the next Repair University.